so good to have a simple practice that you can take with you in everyday life. And um, that's the practice here is short moments um, of the recognition of open intelligence pervaded by love repeated many times until that recognition becomes continuous and automatic. And um, for me that's the answer to the question about how do I learn to love myself. <clears throat> I allow myself to be exactly as I am for short moments repeated many times. And the reason, <coughs> excuse me, the reason why that is learning to love myself is that in a short moment of just stopping all of the descriptions about what's going on, um, most of my descriptions were about me and how everything relates to me and what I think about everything and <coughs> my judgments and opinions and ideas and concepts and how it relates to my past history and my imagined future. So just a short moment of stopping all of those descriptions, enjoying complete perceptual openness just for a short moment and allowing myself to be as I am, however I am. And prior to this teaching, I thought that I needed to have positive um, experiences and thoughts and feelings to be able to love myself. So it seemed kind of easy to love myself when I was happy because then um, I was obviously doing everything right. You know, I was happy, you know, lots of happy thoughts, skipping along the beach and, oh, I love myself, I love everyone, I love the Aaron Bowl. And... But it was much harder, or even the idea of loving myself when I felt lonely or, or sad or, um, or somebody said something to me that was hurtful or, and this brought up all of this data of resentment or rejection or you know how, how do I how do I love myself then and so what I learned from the conventional upbringing was well, what I need to do is then work really hard to get rid of these particular data streams and this is just a brilliant term that simplifies everything everything is data and experience is a stream of ever-changing data and what I learned I needed to do when I had data where I didn't feel that I could love myself with these data the sadness and loneliness and depression and irritation and anger was I needed to get rid of these and get back the positive ones so I could love myself again. But because the experience, the data is always changing, this is an ongoing process of continual suffering because I'm in, it's impossible to hold on to the positive experiences. Think to the happiest moment in your life. Now, when were you most happy and how long did it last? And where did it go? Suddenly it was replaced by something that wasn't so happy and then maybe by something that you described as being really negative or unwanted. And then guess what? You were happy again. And so it's this countless cease, this unpredictable flow of experience. And the conventional training is we need to try and manage this. We need to try and control it. We've got a certain set of descriptions and these are the ones that we need to try and bring about in our life. So being happy is, seems so obvious. But the only problem with that is that because they're always changing, you're always struggling with the appearances. So when I'm happy, I need to work out why I'm happy and I need to try and hold that set of experience in place. Now, why am I happy? Why am I happy? Is it because, because I'm, I'm with this person? I, I found my new intimate partner and, and I'm happy. I'm happy. Okay, I've got to keep this relationship. We've got to stay in this place. And then suddenly everything changes. It's impossible to hold on to that happiness, no matter how much we try to fool ourselves into these descriptions about what it is that's making us happy. We can't hold on to it, and it's so frustrating. And then when we feel unhappy, we have to try and work out, well, why am I unhappy? What is it that's making me unhappy? Is it the same intimate partner that was making me happy a few weeks ago? Are they the cause of my unhappiness now? Is that what needs to change? And so it's this endless game, this hamster wheel of running faster and faster, trying to work out what needs to change, what do I do now? Do I need to understand it better? Do I need to purify myself? Do I need to be somewhere else? Be, be somebody else? Be with somebody else? Just continually working and efforting. And in the short moment of just stopping all of the descriptions, recognizing this naked openness, this raw intelligence that is the basis of your current moment perception. 
And this is key. This is where you'll find open intelligence, is in your current moment perception. Whatever you're thinking, feeling or sensing right now is where you will find this intelligence, this openness, this complete perceptual openness. It never goes anywhere. All that happens is that we get caught up in this world of descriptions and sucked into it and suddenly we're off, like feeling afraid. I have one description, oh, I'm feeling a little bit nervous, oh, that's because of this, and I'm a bit tired, and, you know, I'm da 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 and we're off on another story. And a short moment just presses this reset button and brings us back to this native openness, where everything is just seen clearly as it is. And we begin to love ourselves as we are. And what I started to practice with this was allowing myself to be as I am, particularly with the negative descriptions. Because these are the ones that seem to be wrong. These were the ones that seemed to be evidence that there was something wrong about me and a reason why I couldn't love myself. So I can't love myself when I'm sad or I'm lonely. In a short moment, whilst feeling sad or lonely, I could just allow myself to be as I was without needing to go into any further elaborations. And there was a sense of openness. There was a sense of ease the urge to desperately try and understand what was going on or desperately try and change it, just for a moment was halted. And as I continued on with this practice, more and more I saw that I didn't need to spend all of my time describing everything. This is just such a relief. And more and more, now I'm not caught up in the descriptions. Everything that's experienced becomes more obviously this display of perfect love. It's the beneficial potency of open intelligence itself. Part of this recognition comes about through the practice of short moments, and then it is augmented and speeded up by participating in trainings like the Twelve Empowerments, like we're doing now. And there's a group participating in this training at the moment. And what you begin to see is, is that your negative thoughts, feelings and descriptions about people, places and things, firstly are obviously nothing other than this dynamic energy of open intelligence. And when we begin to allow them to be as they are, rather than emphasizing them in the particular ways that we emphasize them, they become the energy and the power for us to harmonize our relationship with everything in our life. Everything in our life is nothing other than the bright shine of open intelligence. There is only open intelligence. There isn't anything of another kind. No data stream can be found to have a nature separate or apart from loving open intelligence, in the same way that no reflection in a mirror has a nature separate or apart from the mirror itself. It's the dynamic energy of the mirror. What we've been doing is behaving and relating and communicating as if all of these appearances had a separate independent nature and this causes disharmony, um, dysfunction and suffering both for ourselves and for everybody else that we're relating to in this way. We begin to be able to take responsibility for our power as loving open intelligence and that comes about through repeating these short moments and resting as this loving open intelligence this raw naked seeing that's looking through your eyes right now. It's not difficult, it's not mysterious, it's not esoteric, it's not only for some people, it's what's looking through your eyes right now. So it's immediately accessible. All that we need is the training and the support to allow us to access it consistently. Because we've been trained to focus in on the descriptions. So it's a training, it's an education, it's something that we can learn ourselves. We can teach ourselves. And that's what's going on in Balance View. You know, this, this really powerful support network where we're supported and empowered to see that we have this choice in each moment. And it is so powerful to make this choice. To give up the right to be a victim to all of my stories about everything. I've got a lot of stories. And a lot of the stories about how um, it could be stories about um, who's coordinating what's going on here or what groups are coordinating or you know conspiracy theories about this that and the other and 
The clearest perspective on any of these is to rely on open intelligence while you have these thoughts and feelings. And what you're doing there is that whatever is going on in the background, if you like, or whatever groups you might think are responsible for whatever's going on, you take responsibility for your power as open intelligence. Because that's actually all you can do. And then from there, any actions you take will automatically be of benefit to yourself and other people. So if you're worried about the state of the world, this is where you start making a difference. Not in some kind of abstract way, but in the direct recognition of the nature of your mind, and then in expressing that in the way that you relate and communicate and live with every other being and yourself on this planet. Like, this is really powerful, it's really immediate. It's something where you can make a difference right now, with your current thought, with your current sensation, with your current feeling. That's where you begin to harmonize your relationship with yourself. And it has to start with yourself. For me, it had to start with me learning how to love myself. Allowing myself unconditionally to be just as I am. In repeating these short moments. So this is the simple practice. And it's simple, but it's incredibly profound and powerful. And my habit of complicating things was, was really strong, and it can be sometimes really strong. Trying to come up with these complicated conceptual frameworks to make sense of everything that's going on, and to have this, this guidance to bring it back to the simplicity of recognizing open intelligence shining forth its own dynamic display of data, and allowing it to be as it is, and then proceeding from there with this clear perspective and finding that from that clear perspective, this capacity not only to love myself as I am, but increasingly to love everybody else as they are, it just grows and grows naturally. Because this, this is the natural state. Like, this is, I always wanted to have easygoing, loving, powerful relationships with everyone. Like, it, it seems so obvious, but at the same time, it seems so far away. It's like, I want those relationships with everyone, and I don't have those relationships with anyone. But somehow, I kind of like, I, I, it is, it's got to be possible. I, I never quite gave up. You know, it's like something in me knew that it was possible, even just taking us as a human community, for us to relate in this way. And you come to Balanced View, and... Um, it's really weird. It's really, really weird. Because people are relating in a relaxed, open-hearted, loving, pleasant way to each other. Weird. <laughs> I, I, it was, for me, coming here at the beginning, it was really weird. And, um, and it felt really uncomfortable. It felt really uncomfortable, like, like, what's really going on here? <laughs> and, but what I see now is it's, I, I actually, it's so sad that I felt like that. Because it was really, I'd never experienced it before. Like, people just being themselves. And it should be like that everywhere. That should be normal, because it is normal. We just want to be ourselves, we want to get on with everyone, you know, work together on interesting projects, be creative. And yet I'd never experienced it before. And my training in doubt and cynicism and self-hatred and suspicion of others, because if I didn't like myself and didn't like my own thoughts and experiences, then you know, I, I had to be suspicious of everybody else as well with all of their thoughts and experiences and feelings. And to begin to find that actually here was a group of people that weren't living like that. It, it, it pushed all of my buttons. It really pushed all of my buttons. And, um, but something kept me coming back. You know, there was something in me that recognized the, the, the truth and the potency. And more than that, the experience and recognition of what was being spoken about. And in each short moment, I saw it for myself. It was like, oh, I can see it, I get it, I get it. You know, this is not just a book I'm reading or a theory I'm hearing about. I'm recognizing open intelligence. Just, just for an instant, and then it's gone again. 
And this was just completely magnetic. And I wanted more of this. I began to see everything more clearly. I began to see this boot camp of reification, this boot camp of ideas, belief systems, concepts that I'd taken on board so completely and deeply and thoroughly that many of them I wasn't even aware of. So perhaps one form of victimization that I wasn't aware of, self-victimization, was paranoia. You know, really feeling that there were other people that were controlling everything in my life. Or and even with those thoughts, nothing needed to change. All I had to do was rely on open intelligence. And I had the power in that instant of being of benefit to all, regardless of what else was going on. Regardless of the systems that were around me, the people that were around me, the ideas I had, how I was thinking, how I was feeling. This is the power of open intelligence. Where all of these data become this, this stream of beneficial potency, just by allowing them to be as they are. Just by loving myself as I am with all of my thoughts, emotions and sensations. This is the power of great benefit. It's so powerful. <laughs>